Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Working on the volume. Okay, now I can hear. No, you're all good. Your volume's good. Your connection is really good. Cool. All right. Let's let's get into it. Let's do it. Okay, I hope you're happy because you started me on a shopping rampage. So now what did I you have get? my own list of items that I need. Like, I've been obsessing about it all day. And I'm going to be ranting about them. Like, we call it story and rant around here. Um, <laughs> story and rant, that's I was cute. like, let's do this on the regular. And then I was like, well, maybe not, because I'll just be shopping my ass off the whole time. So I know. You know? Everybody's having a good response to it, so I'm excited. I'm excited, too. You're, you're absolutely right. They really are. Um, let's get started and just do this. Let's say, tell, give us your resume. Where have you worked? Let's start with that. My resume. Well, I've been in the fashion industry, as you know, for about 15 years. And um, my first internship was at Marie Claire magazine. And then I decided, well, let me see about PR. So I also did an internship at BCBG Max Azria. Oh, I forgot and about then, that part. Yeah. Yes. And then um, I did an internship at Teen People Magazine. Which is where yeah. I first met you because I yes. I was very close with that whole Teen People crew at the time. Tell me like a little snapshot of fashion in, yes. in those years. What were you, were you were like the fashion assistant there or what were you doing there? You, I, so I was the intern at first. Yeah. And then um, Haley wanted to hire me, which was great. I was really excited about that because Always good when that happens. I spent a year and a half trying to break into the industry, like doing internships, working at night and then at like retail stores. And she, you know, team people was very diverse at the time. It really Fun. was. That's a really good point to make. That's very yeah. true. It was super diverse fun, young environments. And um, Alva Polinsky was the accessories editor and we bonded for some reason. And hey, I, became her, I became accessories assistant at Teen People Magazine. Right, and then what happened after that? Well, I just worked my way up to accessories editor. Alva left and I became the accessories editor for a while. Um, and then Team People folded, like a lot of publications were starting to do. Yeah. And then I went freelance for a while. I tried, dib dibbled and dabbled in other things like acting. And then I got back on the scene. Um, I started doing, at, for People Style Washington and Style Magazine, I started styling their television segments. Yeah, that's um, right. That's, I did the same thing too there for yeah. a bit of time. That's right. That's yeah. Right. It was a lot of fun because um, the television segments became big at one point and I was doing like three a week. I um, think you, yeah, you were there. You were there when it was big. Like I was helping out. We have a lot of mutual friends at, at, at yeah. Time Inc. Um, to yeah. this day. And, and, but I'm a Time Inc. I'm a Time, you, time that, As anyone will tell you, the TVs, the, 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 those fashion segments on television are really popular with people. Yeah, so I know for some reason they're so they really popular, are. but yep. that's not, you know, we were like magazine editors. So we like, you know, yeah, that like, was, oh. yeah, <laughs> we thought it was so them. kind of commercial, but yes, you know, huge. I actually want to do huge. a lot of that now. I think that story and rain should be doing those now. We, we should have story and rain segments on TV. Um, yeah, they're huge. What, what, else, what, so what happened after that? So then I got hired uh, by Pamela Cristiani at Essence Magazine to be their fashion editor. And so um, it was kind of natural for me because at Teen People and all of the other places that I've been, it was all celebrity driven. Yeah. So it was right. fine. Yeah. That's so right. it, was, it was cool to just be back and, and on the edit side and style um fashion covers celebrities fashion stories i got to create i got to work with a ton of women um and we had a really really good time there and i, I was there for almost three years and, and then when, were, I, when did you leave i left in 2018 yeah and i went freelance i broke out and tell us, tell us about your your recent freelance well not much freelance happening these days, but tell us what you've been doing since 2018. 
So since 2018, I've done like fun things like for Earth Magazine and kind of indie things because I'm gritty. So I like that kind yeah. of, you know, a lot of that public mix, right? Yeah, we need that mix of like commercial publication okay. and like edgy, gritty kind of cool things. Um, I work with Peloton a lot. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did. have heard me rant about this, but I did like the, I bought a Peloton in January. I had this. Really? Like, I had this like intuition to buy a Peloton in January before all this went down. And I literally counted as like the best purchase of my life. Like I didn't yeah. know you were working with Peloton. That's me. I do. I work with them. Um, well, up until the quarantine, um, it's fun styling um, some of their instructors for launches and things like that. It's, it's very different. It's not editorial, but it's a lot of fun and um, it's not a toxic environment. Everyone's really nice. You know, yeah, no, it's, there, nice it's nice very different than the fashion environment. That's but right. um, well, how so? How what, what do you think the main difference is between sort of the lifestyle styling environment and the fashion magazine world environment? So the fashion world, which I, you know, I grew up in, you yeah. know, everyone's it used to be now it's a little more inclusive. Well, a lot more inclusive and it's not as snobby because you can get you know, you can get called out on Instagram and dragged through the mud, but it was very, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, snobby and, and, you know, like... Like a small type People community. just won't speak to you. Yeah. I've gone and interviewed with a person at a magazine, a book, and then, like, they'll see me, like, in on three TV. days, we're both editors and won't speak, you know? Wow, Joy, it's, you're telling it like it is right now. That's I right. am. I mean, I have to be honest. You're it's, right. It's rude, and a lot of times, it's you rude. know, people rude, don't speak or they're. It's rude, but it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. Um, and my, you know, I have really good friends and really great relationships, and I always made it a point to be nice to people. Of course. And you know, sometimes you want to kill PR people, but you you love them. And with Instagram and with things like that, because I worked in a time where it was pre-Instagram and we did, you couldn't right. friends people like you do now. So I'm friends with a lot of PR right. people and you know, you know, when you leave and they leave, you, you get to speak to them and really have a good relationship. And I made it a point to have good relationships with people because I just don't want to go around being stank all the time. It's I hear just you. Not What's not time. in my blood, it's not in your, that's not the way we do things. No, um, yeah. So that's another thing too, like you bring up a really good point because I've always been very close to the PR people, even before the age of Instagram and friending people on Facebook. Um, right. That's how old I am. Um, but I've always <laughs> been very, I've always been very um, inspired by those relationships and like hold, yeah. I hold them very dear to my Art. And I'm very close to a lot of people to this day. Like some of these relationships that I have with people have been, you know, going on for many, many, many years. Um, Same with me. Like when I went freelance, it was a lot of my PR friends that would be like, oh, my God, you need work, you know, try over there. Or they would invite me to an event. Yeah. And that's how I style something for the cover tour, which I enjoyed doing very much, which gave me that connection to right. working at Peloton because, um, the girl. That's who, how it works. Know. Yeah, it works. You just connect. Yeah, all it's, around. It's interesting that you say that because my first um, real editorial position. No, not real. No, my first job as an editor with an editor title. Um, right. I found its way to me through a PR person that I worked with on a daily basis, and she said, "You know, there's some movement. At well, there's a lot of movement at Cosmo. The whole team's gone. They're hiring a whole new team." Like, right. here, here's a connection, go um, interview with Elaine Farley. So- Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that, that is kind of how it has, ha happens. Um, yeah. As, I want to ask you this, because our mutual friend, Holly Carter, who's a contributing beauty editor for us. I um, love Holly. I know, hi Holly, she's here in the chat. Um, hi Holly. Mm -hmm. uh, as a stylist and a magazine staffer, have you felt free to use all the brands and work on all the stories that you personally love throughout the years? Like, what's been your experience? I know that I personally, just from my own experience, I haven't always been able to. My experience has been that some magazines and clients are less free than others. 
Um, Definitely. I love being able to pull from anywhere and everywhere I want because I think it all has a place together and it looks right. best together. Uh, right. That's always been my philosophy as a fashion editor, high, low, luxury, contemporary, urban. It all has to live in the same place for me. Um, right. That's the core of Story and Rain, and it's actually how Story and Rain got its name. But I'm wondering, how do you feel about that as a stylist and a magazine staffer? Have you felt free to use all the brands you want, or have you felt felt stifled in any way? Um. Well, it just depends on what book you're at, right? It, right. So it's not really about you. I mean, I obviously want to use you. Yeah. all the brands I want to use in different it's ways, about the but. Reader. About the reader. It's about the reader, who the who the reader is. Definitely the essence girl was different than the in style girl. Right. And even the in style girl was different than the people style watch girl. Right. And the teen people girl was younger. So that was a whole different thing. So you you know, I felt maybe at teen people we couldn't use high end brands like Chanel or anything like that. But then at essence, we could, but then they, you know, if they loaned, you yeah. know, it's all about it's, the PR, you know, it's all about who, what their brand is and what kind of magazine it was. Essence was more kind of a lifestyle um, for us, for Black women, and it could be high end, it could be, me. you know, we wanted to hit all of these diverse price points because, you know, everyone's can afford Dif you know, you know, it depends on what you can afford and what yeah. you want to buy, but you still want to see luxury. You want to be inspired, but you also want to be able to afford things. I felt stifled in a way where certain brands wouldn't loan, you yeah, know, that's for always, that's always, okay. it's always attached to a celebrity or things like that. So that's where I feel stifled. And maybe a long time ago, it was more about advertisers and yeah, and actually, like yeah, there are a lot of, there are many different elements that go into so this many elements that I think, that you know, if you're on the inside, you understand what those are. But yeah, I, what I would love to ask you before we get into talking about all your picks and all the brands, um, what story, like what things do you want to work on now in your career that you haven't been able to? That's sort of where I'm going with this. Like, it, are there stories, are there brands you want to highlight that like what 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 are you feeling right now in your career at this point what's what do you what what uh bucket do you want to fill um i like freelancing cause, because i'm able to one minute do something very lifestyle nice and then and the next i'm able to do something edgy like with earth magazine and i feel like things like that make me happy i mean for me creatively i want to do like edgy you know, high end. Um, I want to work with really artsy people and like artists. just yeah, yeah, you know, just like artists and, and just create and do you know big fashion stories and take beautiful pictures and and things like that. I, I'm less of a commercial person, you know, and more of an artist in that way. And I want to style things um, like that um, and. I, with Irk, you know, because it, it's not based in the U.S., a lot of brands wouldn't loan. So I got to work with, like, some indie brands. But that's and, you know, so I, interesting about the job, right? It's so interesting to work with indie brands and other kind of designers from, like, I don't know, Budapest or somewhere, or like, you know, Africa or different things like that. Because here you get, you know, you get the the into the same designers all the time the it's like problems. the same pool of resources yeah right. the problems and the wangs and you and you love that because i appreciate that too but sometimes when you see like someone's art and their little collection of 10 pieces it makes you happy i Absolutely. mean i might be talking you know well we're talking today about your every week story and rain does our six list we choose six things that we're just like can't stop thinking about that's really how fashion editors and stylists and, and beauty editors think like we have the right. things that are kind of in rotation that we can't stop thinking about whether it's like a serum foundation or a certain shoe silhouette or designer or sunglasses yeah. and so we're talking about it six today you curated six items from dip, uh, six different brands all black founded and i just wanted yes. to ask you 
what, why did you choose these six? What was top of mind for you? Are they just sort of like on your radar right now as a person who's in the know, who works in well, fashion? A few, a few of them were, have been on my radar for a while, um, especially working at Essence and, you know, incorporating a lot of black owned brands into our, you know, yeah. mix. I mean, the real concerted effort is always made to do that. Yeah. Which is and it's kind of exciting because being a designer is hard because it's a business as yeah. well as you, you think people are sitting behind something just making a skirt, but it's it's a business. They need financing. They need Capital. money. You have to buy fabrics. You have to, you know, it's so much you have to do to actually be a designer. And um, right. a lot of people don't get to do more than one collection a season. And sometimes they can't do a collection even each year. So um, I found brands that, that we don't all know, that are our like normal brands that we just pull out, like we know Tracy Reese and we know, you know. We talked about Tracy Reese and she's been around forever. She yeah. is so talented and such right. an incredible business person. But yeah. She's the OG. She's the OG. Um, Coco, yeah. and, Coco and Breezy is pretty OG. They are, they are, but they're still after like 2010, right? Yeah, yeah. So and um, and uh, you know, I felt like things like Kushni is already big. We know about her, even though I love her and I love, love the do line. You the Target collection. Yeah. Huh. What do you think of the Kushni Target collection? I haven't seen it yet. Oh my You're god! Die. You better get online and order some. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I'm go look at it. it. Go look at it. Uh, so I wanted to highlight some things that I felt maybe, you know, like Mateo, he has a store on, you know, in the city and maybe a I, lot of people don't know that. Okay, we're going to get into it now. Um, I have so many things to say about Mateo and everything I love else. you, Dylan. <laughs> so we're going to start, we're going to go, we're going to go one through six just how it appears on the site. I don't know if you guys awesome. see a title here. Does anyone see a title for this chat with a link to read and shop? If you can't, uh, the story went live today. You can shop it right on the homepage on storyandrain.com. And all of um, Joy's comments about why she loves each are there in the, in the product descriptions. So I want to read a little bit about each brand um, okay. from sort of their like, you know, brand bios and, you know, all the sort of ins and outs of their DNA. Andrea Maya launched in 2013. My oh, God, I love. I mean, when love. you sent me this bikini, I was Everyone's like, going crazy and, and sending me DMs. They're like, I, what please the hell? that bikini. So yeah. launched in 2013, owned by Nigerian fashion designer, Dumebi Imaya, is aligned with a unique take on swimmer, which is what I love. It's like, very out of the box swimwear and swimwear yeah. can be so boring, right? Like, it can, it can. It, and it's just so, it's got so much flair and so much flourish. Um, she educated herself about fashion. Um, the genesis of the brand at 17, that is when that all began. Amazing. So tell us about the swimsuit you picked and a little bit more about why you love it. Um, so I picked, I mean, I love the whole collection. I've used it. I styled Laura Harrier and I used um, oh, I love her. a two piece from this collection because like, and, and you know, you see things online and, and it's not until you get it in person that you're so excited about it and all the detail and the pleating with the top and the skirt. I was like, oh my God, I was dying over it because I like couture and details like that because we see so much fast fashion sometimes. We're like, eh. So... Right. Um, I looked at all the swimsuits and I was like, of course, this is a season we would be traveling if we weren't stuck in the house. And that's I right. love swimwear. And I, and that's another thing I want to do. I want to style swim stories for some reason. Oh, I'm obsessed good. We need a swim story. I've been yeah. doing a swim story. I love swim. So when I saw this, it was like the color, the pleats in just different places, how, the high waist of it all. Just everything about the little details. And it's also diverse. You can wear it in maybe like three different ways. I love and it. It's, it's I just love so it. beautiful. I, actually, I had I had a story slated for the summer, um, convertible swim. I was thinking mm. about people right now and not necessarily being able to travel 
to like exotic locales or even to local beach locales. And I thought about the fact that, well, maybe people are going to their public pool or maybe people are going to their local beach or maybe they're going into their backyard and sitting right. or their terrace or their roof deck. Right. And I thought I know. Was convertible. I was laying out about, something. Right? I was thinking about convertible swim and like pieces that could be worn with like a wide leg pant or a jean or a skirt. And uh, this line is exactly that. It's like totally. peach, pieces with that kind of flair. Okay, so then I, I went down the rabbit hole, like, and I'm like, what about these pants, though? Oh, my God. Like, who, like what about those pants, A? Yes. And then B, this dress is also amazing from the, from the same designer. I know, I know. I know the whole line. It's, it's so good. What? I know. I she has so that. many good pieces. I can't what? even take it. And this dress, everybody, I hope I'm not making too much noise with this paper. This can be tied a number of different ways. So right. this can be worn backwards. It could be worn tighter. Like there's all these different ways to wear this dress. I think this it's line so is amazing. It is amazing. And she has even a, like a jumpsuit that's a bright yellow color and it's just beautiful. So it's, I, I love the line. I mean, even the pieces that um, are older, I love those as well. So pretty. Um, yeah. So Coco and Breezy was the next one on the list. Coco and Breezy, I know they've them. been. We love I, well, you know, with this curation too, I also wanted to show the diversity to yes. not just um, clothing, but accessories and clothing um, with in, in the Black realm. And Coco and Breezy, they're so cute. They're DJs. So they have this artsy, cool vibe anyway. So I feel like their eyewear totally speaks to who they are. And we, and they also, it's, it's also, it's sunglasses and it's eyewear. So, you know, they did both, which I think it's great. And I love the sunglasses because they're eclectic. Yeah. And I feel like they're just, the rim is just the flat rim at the bottom. I just think it's cool. And you can just wear it with a pair of jeans and a shirt and just, it's elevated all of a sudden. I love, I love a fashion forward brand that does mm -hmm. not only um, sunglasses, but optical. Yeah. Know? And it's true. It's, they've been around, uh, they, they were, they were founded in 2009 and they right. were kind of an instant hit. In oh, instant right. Hit. They are 2009. 2009. Sorry. But you were, you were like very close. Like yeah. they, they were an instant hit in the entertainment and fashion worlds and, and, you know, they created the third eye sunglasses for Prince, rest in peace. Um, and they've done all these great collaborations with people like Hershey's and Ciroc. And, yep. like, and so like when I was going through Coco and Breezy, I was like, okay, so I guess now I need these sunglasses. I know. Like, Aren't those now, now, I have, now I need to buy these to, like tonight. Yes. How yes. Is it? Such a good brand. Um, it is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and so the next one, we, we spoke about this a little bit earlier, Mateo, New York. Um, Mateo. Yeah. So I it's like fine jewelry. Yeah, it's so fine. I love it. It's fine jewelry. I find as I get older, I mean, I have a lot of costume jewelry. I mean, being an accessories editor and just an editor, I, I probably have a store of jewelry. I but had, like, yeah, I had to build some. I was like breaking all my jewelry. I have far too much of it. It's true, as an accessories editor, so much jewelry, right? So much. And um, a lot of things I keep because they're designers I've loved and I've worked with them since my teen yeah. people days. I really have a lot. But, yeah. um, you know, as I get older, I want a lot. I want more fine jewelry. Sometimes I want to just, you know, elevate um, just my jewelry game, you know. And Mateo, he's very minimal and, you know, beautiful, a lot of precious stones. And I, I really like the brand. I've featured it before. I've used it before. I've met him. He's amazing. He seems and really lovely. I want to meet him. because hey, He's so lovely. He also has a bag line. I know. I saw his bags. He has candles. His um, mm -hmm. store is in our neighborhood. It's just, you know, very close to Story and Rain. Um, yep. He was born and raised in Montego Bay. Yes. Um, I love this. He's the son of a seamstress. He's another one person that's like self-taught, which I love. Yes, he's self-taught, which I, I mean, how do you home. teach yourself how to make jewelry? I don't yeah. even know. And I don't, me neither, because making jewelry, as we both know, is a very intricate process. And this is. is great. 
this is amazing, selected by the Smithsonian Museum to be featured and sold at the African American Museum of Art and Culture in Washington, D.C. in 2016. Yes. Yes, and that's then um, opened their first flagship, as we just mentioned, in December 2016. And they were also um, 2017 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund uh, finalists. So yeah. that's kind of amazing. Um, He's, it's sick, and it, his jewelry is just, it's just beautiful. And you picked a ring. You picked, like, a I adore you. Because, I mean, I love things that have precious little messages. I like that this is, like, across a band with, like, a little diamond in, for the O. You know, it's the little things like that that <laughs> make know. me crazy. Okay, so the rabbit, the rabbit hole that I fell into, the glorious rabbit hole, is, like, Okay, so there's a whole ankle bracelet collection. I didn't use an like, ankle bracelet you person. You want a pearl ankle bracelet. Oh my God, that's so darling. And then, and then maybe you want the pearl ankle bracelet, and maybe you want to do it with like, a <laughs> turquoise. <laughs> my mom loved ankle bracelets, and so. Um, that's dear to my heart. She always wore one. She does? She did, yeah. She did, she did. Mm -hmm. That's, wow. That's so specific, yeah. Joey. I know. I don't, I don't know like why, but she just loved ankle bracelets. I mean, I wore them when they were in, and then I forgot about them, and then I bring them back. But I, I like them, you know. I forget to do it. I know. I, when, I, when I was on the website, I was like, oh, my God, ankle bracelets. Like, I have to get one. Or two. That's so cool. Um, but you, what what pieces have you like? Can you, uh, what are some of the stories that you uh, use Mateo's pieces for? Um, you remember? So for um, Black History Month, we highlighted Black designers, like jewelry designers, because you know that at the time, at a certain time, like real ju jewelry craftsmen and designers on the rise. It was it's it's not so many, and now it's, no. You know, now it's a lot more, but we highlighted him there and I've just used his pieces for styling fashion stories and things like that whenever I can, because I think it's so precious. I love it. I, I got to introduce you to Opal Stone. She's another um, amazing jewelry, fine jewelry designer. I'll yeah. let you know all about it. Okay, Pip Buzz is next. Pip Buzz! Okay. okay, she's gonna kill me because she sent me some nails and I was trying to put them on, but I didn't do it in time, but I love them. Um, so, Pip, oh, yes, yes. I was gonna say, I'm all hooked up in this department, so I'm all good with my Pip Buzz, but I do need to put mine on. And it's, you know, I, I, I'm like an all or I have thing. one, I have one on, so it's like, <laughs> It's ombre. It's like a uh, nude with an ombre yellow tip that I don't think you can barely see. Oh, wait. It. No, look. Put it up. I want to see. I don't know if you can see oh, the like. No, you can't see the, the ombre lighting. from here. But, um, yeah. So she's, so um, Pippa's caught my attention. Well, I've known her for Thank ages, you. but she did Solange's nails for the Met Gala. Well, how did you guys did... meet? Let's take it back. How did you guys meet? Oh, we. We met in college. You're kidding so, me. I didn't know you guys go way, way, way. Yeah. I mean, I she that. wasn't in college at the time, but she she always w um, did things that were uplifting and ha having organizations in college. So there was a modeling club. And so she ran that. And, and I've loved her ever since. And she was doing this craft. She was doing nails for so long. Um, and it's then amazing. All, all of a sudden... Boom. It just blows Nail up. Nail art. Yeah. Nail art blows up. And the, the craft that she's been honing and doing and making a business for basically her whole entire career has blown up. And now it's great for her because I'm really happy about that. She started doing celebrities. And, you yeah. know, once you start doing celebrities, it's like, you know, your you career, know. even though you were great before, That's right. for some reason, you yeah. know, the visibility just the visibility increases just by nature of the whole thing. But I want to read a little bit about her. Veteran manicurist for over 20, with over 25 years of experience. Um, I love this. Manicures are, are no longer a luxury, but a necessity. I love yes. that philosophy. 
as you said, she's worked, you know, top celebrities, music artists, actors, uh, editorial magazines. Pippa's to go, which we were just looking at right now. Yes. And it comes, there's like a whole kit and like an instruction. Yes thing so how I love it because like she's like a celebrity nail tech but or sorry celebrity nail manicurist but in your home like you could just get what she does because the amount of work she put into that Solange Python it is so next level now. it is so next level it was so next level yeah I was like <sighs> You know, and she keeps doing those next level things. She does Rachel Zoe, she does Mariah Carey. So she does all of these, you know, women that you wouldn't even know about because she doesn't, you know, um, you know, she doesn't go around wearing celebrities on her shoulder. She's just so humble and so special to me. But she created this while we're in quarantine. And she's like, you know, why not? do a nail that you can reuse so I could take this off and reuse on like the old throwback nails. Completely. I uh, it's my birthday next Thursday and I'm putting these nails on for my birthday. Like now yes. have, like now I you can do it for special occasions, for weddings. You just want a little like nail fix and then you can, you know, and you can But just I love use. I love this too. I think this is so forward thinking for Pit Buzz that you yeah. Know, before before things got locked down and shut down, it was all about, um, you know, uh, the business model includes um, at like corporate gigs as well. Like they yeah. were sending nail techs to 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 to. Oh, offices. totally. And that became this, a thing. We we encourage companies to take advantage of a monthly wellness day to help boost morale and productivity with their teams. Like I love I love this idea. And they, at, at one point. Um, she offered a manicure duo where you could have a lunch meeting or a conference call with a coworker and have manicures together. I know. I think that's amazing. That's just, it's uh, brilliant because that's what women do. Like you, you bond, you go out, you get your nails. We have done, to do that want... stuff anyway. We want to do that stuff rather. We I know. Want to do that stuff. Might as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So there's custom made press on nails that you can get on the site, which is super yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, and I think the next one on the list was the um, the bag, the red uh, sisal bag. Tell us all about yeah. that, please. So Ari Nungwe, wait, I have to say this right. Ari Nungwe, it's an Ari Nungwe bag. It's beautiful. It's, um, you know, so let first of all, let's talk about the narrative because that's where it comes out of. So the yeah. narrative was founded by Farah Samoy. And she lives here in Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn. Oh, I love yay. Brooklyn. And she has a store in Brooklyn. And it's she. the narrative is a whole bunch of artists from all around the world that she has their products in store and online. And their products are so beautiful, sustainable, high-end, um, really great materials. And of course, if you're going to have a summer tote, you want to carry something like really chic, um, you you want to feel like it, it just looks rich, and this bag just really looks rich. The color is beautiful. It's the hundred percent sisal material, so it's like it's just oh, it's it's on my wish list. I there's love a it. Real, you said that, and you said that, and and there's a real elegance about the collection. Mm -hmm. Um, and just in the way, and all the the the, the hardware. Not, it's not even hardware because it's. It's things like horn, and there's all these it, there's all this attention to detail that makes right. the bags really, really elevated. And and I love this. It's like and it's made in Kenya, handcrafted and made in Kenya. So it's really like when something's handcrafted and you know just made in a certain region that you know that it's just like the materials and everything and all the love and the beauty and the art went into the piece you kind of feel very excited about something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it, 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 they, they, you know, the value chain, I'm go again gonna read from the, from the brands like Credo, uh, using responsibly sourced leather and upcycled cow horn, we love that, providing yes. fair labor wages to our artisans and weavers, working yes. with women to provide economic sustainability. Where's the store in Brooklyn, Dree? Where, where um, I have to Google the address, um, so I don't have the address, but I believe it's on Bedford Avenue, um, but I don't know the exact location. I actually want to go to the store. 
probably oh, okay. soon get out of quarantine because yeah. I've never I've never been and oh, I've worked yeah. with her and worn something of hers before, but I've never met her, which I'm I'm probably gonna change this year. Well, Good. Hopefully. <laughs> well, descri describe the bag that you chose because it's really great. It's like half red and half natural. But yes. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, it's kind of um, shaped kind of like a fan. It fans out and has that one strap kind of going in the middle. Um, so it's modern like that. The, the shape is very modern and it's really big. So you can take it to the beach or the grocery store for little oh. items or just your everyday life so I love you can, a bag like you can that. just have a chic bag like that Beach. i mean i feel like that's that's what a summer bag should be right yeah the summer bag could should be able to go to the beach and maybe and, and look good enough to be in the, the city as well right totally totally you this is the bag that i love i love like this one yeah that's it's great and she has that i love that and that and she has um another color like more Blue. rainbow no it's like it's like this this cerulean blue, but you guys yes. maybe can't see this. This is a I, yeah, I it's, it's like a pale pink. Yeah. It's like this beautiful oh. pale pink. Yeah, I know. And I love the the side, the hardware. I love the, the artistry that went into it. It's really, I love things like this. So when I pick the things I love, it's because I love different creative things about each piece and how because, you know, I don't like, I love fast fashion, but a lot of things, you know, I want for the art of it, for the fact that someone put so much thought in the thought process that they put into making this bag or this shirt or this. I always, I always love items, especially as accessories with like grave attention to detail, like color yeah. detail, texture detail. Totally. Like it, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Hanifa. Last Anifa. Last so she, Tell us she caught my attention on Instagram because um, I think Sierra blew it up. And then I just saw her in, like the line on Instagram because it would be like yellow colors or bold, really bold See, we colors. We like color. We're people that and, like color. I like yes. color too. And then I noticed like it was like all different type of women, um, black women who are curvy at a size 13 or curvy at a size four and it just fit every part of your body right because we have different sizes like our booty is bigger and then our you know breast part is smaller or like you know proportions are different on women and I find that this line kind of hits that or speaks to that um really well and it's really really the colors and the detail too for her, it's really cute. Um, and I think um, to your point, you know, the, the fabrications, like the textures really, you know, can be, are very wearable for many different body types. It is. You it know, is. And, and I think she makes designs for sizes too. zero to 20. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, and so and I every every woman I see in her piece, no matter what size they are, they look good. Right. And it's and it's the same piece because I mean, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I like as a stylist and, a, you know, an editor, we look for specific details and especially with styling. So I would style a smaller model and then I'll style a curvy model and I'll be like, why is this? the same shirt but it looks so like they put extra fabric or they did something to alter the piece so it looks homely and i'm like just because these guys everybody, everybody listen this is a, this is a stylist you know sharing like, this information you have curves you people. don't want to like right. have this extra ugly fabric or something you know something that's just doesn't work that's and right. I found that a lot of times and I've styled curvy curvier models and all type all types of women especially even doing television segments so they would be like joy you make you know I look so cute I'm like you're supposed to look cute things are supposed to just fit your body like it doesn't have to be you have the ugly clothes because maybe you're a certain size and I hate that so this designer caught my attention because like literally every woman and her clothes look good. Yeah. I mean, these are the pieces that 
you picked you picked a beautiful ruched top. You want to describe the top? Um, the ruching, the cutout, the corset. I mean, that's all trending right now. And I love that she did a virtual fashion show. It wasn't on models, but it was like on silhouettes of curvy women. And it was just bomb. The the whole idea was just cool. Do I want, you know, virtual not do I want that to replace the model? No. But I thought it was cool. It was I very it was beautifully done. Very beautifully done and her very her creatively beautiful, done. Very creative. I thought it was like, you know, yeah, bomb. that's somebody that's somebody with really great taste to pull off yeah. the way that that was yeah. pulled off. That that that's taste for days. Yeah. So the shirt I picked, yes, it has ruching, it has corset, it has cinching, it's cut out, it has shoulder pads. I mean, it's a statement piece for sure. And I love how powerful that is, you know? How yes, powerful just, it make me feel to be I in that. Read, I want to read an excerpt um, from Hanifa about that collection that okay. was presented virtually due to, you know, COVID-19. There could not be any um in-person presentation so Rit, this is what she said about her collection which is called i believe um what is the name of the collection Han hanifa pink label congo oh, pink pink. Label. oh yes, yes, this yes. is pink label congo which she was hoping to show yeah. as you know in a different way but then got very creative and everyone should go and check it out if you haven't seen it already but this you is what should. she says about the collection i love Rit what she says riddled with, uh, let's read it because it's amazing Okay. Riddled with a painful history, the beauty of Congo is often untapped and overlooked. The gentleness, beauty, history, poise, majesty, strength, power, and hope of the Congolese spirit inspired this collection. When creating each piece, I was reminded of the stories my mother told me of the women she knew back home in Congo. Women who suffered great loss but still mustered every ounce of strength every day to show up. My hope yeah. is that this collection inspires all women to stand tall in their power and like the Democratic Republic of Congo, to use their history, whether pretty or painful, to redesign their future. My country, the land of Congo, is ripe with an abundance of natural resources, the greatest of which are its people, its women. I mean, that's so beautiful. Cool. Yeah. When I read that, I was like, wow you know really that, powerful. It, yeah it's really really powerful and that's what i feel about that line and that yeah. shirt you know and if i could buy any most of it's sold out a lot of it is sold out if yeah, anybody goes is. to the website i think maybe maybe all of it is sold uh, i guess maybe not the shirt that we not sold, all not yet not all. a lot of it. i would like these pants i know and those are sold out that's what i would like I also right. think this sweater is really beautiful too. Is it the long one? With no, it's all the, this gold crop. Oh yes, I love that. I love, love, love that. So it's beautiful. Pretty. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it was great catching up with you to talk about all this. You too. I am like, I'm so inspired to shop. Um. I know. I want to shop, and I'm like, but I don't have any. Where are we going? Anywhere. We're not going anywhere. All right, Joy, well, we're gonna have to do this again, okay? Guys, um, Joy's curation of, uh, of six items from all the brands that we just talked about is live on storyandrain.com. It sits right in the middle of our homepage. So if you're not familiar with, every week we do six items. It always sits right at the middle of the homepage. It's directly shoppable. And we've also got a um, full story on the website as well. Um, so check it out. And you, my friend, I will see very soon. Thank you for having me and sharing this with me and like, you know, just working with me with uh, sharing my love of um, African American and black designers and I, companies and I, I, I really I, appreciate it. I'm so it. glad. Um, and we got to do it again. We got to do okay. it over again. All right. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.